Did you ever look out the window mid-flight and think, wait, why are we just flying in circles? Yeah, it's not random at all. There's actually a pretty cool science behind it. And hey, if you're into stories that make flying make sense, subscribe to Jet Logic so you don't miss the next one. Did it ever happen to you that you looked out the airplane window, seen the same patch of land again and thought, wait, didn't we just fly over that? Relax, you're not in a time loop. You're in what pilots call a holding pattern, basically a big invisible racetrack in the sky. It's how air traffic control keeps planes organized and safe while waiting for clearance to land. Imagine a giant aerial waiting room where everyone's flying in smooth circles instead of sitting on chairs. Each plane follows a set route. One leg inbound towards a fix, a specific navigation point, then outbound, making mostly right turns unless told otherwise. It's all precise, timed, and beautifully choreographed. From the ground, it looks like a random loop, but up here, it's a dance of discipline and control. Pilots don't just circle, they perform a sky ballet with math, timing, and trust. So why do pilots take you on this sky merry-go-round? Sometimes it's bad weather, foggy, stormy, or windy for a safe approach. Other times it's pure traffic control, with too many planes wanting to land at the same time. Add in ATC sequencing, runway issues, fueler weight checks, or even procedural spacing between aircraft, you've got plenty of reasons for a hold. Think of it like a busy restaurant kitchen. Everyone's got an order, but the chef, in this case ATC, can only plate so many meals at once. In the next few chapters, we'll break down each reason using real-world examples to show the logic, the science, and the patience behind those high-altitude circles. You know that moment when the captain suddenly says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be in a holding pattern for a bit due to weather at our destination. Yeah, right there, that's where nature starts calling the shots. When the sky turns moody, lightning crackling, clouds stacked like mountains, or thick fog hugging the runway, Planes can't just swoop in one after another like usual. Here's the deal, bad weather messes with visibility and radar precision. In clear skies, air traffic controllers can let planes land just a few miles apart, but when storms roll in, they have to widen the gaps for safety. It's like spacing out cars during a downpour. You don't tailgate when you can barely see the brake lights ahead, right? The same rule applies up there. Another thing, pilots usually rely on visuals when skies are clear. They can literally see the runway and time their descent but during low ceilings or heavy rain, they switch to instrument approaches, guided entirely by their cockpit screens and signals from the ground. It's safer, but slower. Each plane now takes longer to line up and land, so everyone else starts stacking up in the sky like planes waiting for their turn on an invisible spiral staircase. And it gets worse when storms block multiple approach paths. Imagine two or three arrival routes all merging into one narrow, safe corridor because thunderstorms have made the others unusable. Suddenly, dozens of planes are converging on a single line, each taking turns like cars merging onto one lane of highway after a crash. Controllers can't rush this. They sequence carefully to keep every aircraft safe, which means more time circling. Sometimes these holds are short, maybe 15 to 30 minutes, because thunderstorms move fast. But for passengers, it feels endless. The seatbelt sign stays on, drinks are paused, and the engines hum on repeat. Pilots keep you updated with something called an EFC time expect further clearance. It's their way of saying we're safe, we're waiting, and as soon as Mother Nature chills out, we'll head down. So let's say the skies are clear and there's not a single thundercloud in sight, yet your flight still starts circling. What gives? Well, not every delay comes from bad weather. Sometimes the sky itself just gets too crowded, and that's when traffic and flow control take over. Ever wondered why some of the busiest airports in the world feel like a waiting room in the sky? Not always the weather, it's traffic. Just like highways, airports have their limits. Some have one main runway, which means only one plane can land or take off at a time. Others like Dallas, DFW, or LAX have multiple runways, allowing simultaneous arrivals and departures. But even those giants can only handle so many planes per minute before things start to jam up. Airports call this limit their arrival capacity. When the number of inbound planes goes beyond that, air traffic control has to start slowing the flow, kind of like a traffic cop holding cars at an intersection so the highway doesn't back up. That's where holding stacks come in. Picture four invisible layers of planes circling above the same point at different altitudes, all waiting for their turn to descend. London Heathrow is famous for this. 
Its stacks have names like Bovington or Lamborn, each with jets from all over the world looping in neat racetrack patterns. It looks calm on radar, but trust me, it's a carefully choreographed dance between pilots and controllers keeping everyone spaced by the second. To manage this chaos, air traffic control uses something called flow management. They can delay planes before takeoff with assigned slot times or ground holds, basically telling airlines, don't even start your engines yet. Your landing slot isn't ready. But for long haul flights, that's not an option. You can't exactly tell a plane halfway over the Atlantic to pause for a bit. So when they arrive early or when schedules get crunched, airborne holding is the only choice left. Take Heathrow's morning rush, for example. Long haul flights from New York, Dubai, and Hong Kong are all arriving at once, mixing with short European hops. Add a few delays and suddenly a perfect storm of sequencing begins. Across the pond, airports like LAX or Dallas-Fort Worth face the same ballet every morning. Dozens of planes line up, controllers juggle priorities, and the sky becomes one giant waiting room in motion. By now, you've probably realized that holding isn't just some random sky circle pilots invent mid-air. Nope, it's actually a well-planned ATC procedure. There are two main kinds of holds, charted and random. Charted holds are already drawn out on official approach charts, like a parking spot that's always there when you need it. When controllers say hold is published, pilots already know exactly where to go, what fix to hold over, the radial, the direction of turns, and how long each leg of the pattern should be. Then there are random holds, assigned on the fly when the airspace gets busier than usual. That's when ATC gets specific. They'll say something like, hold over ABC VOR, Southwest radial right turns, one minute legs, Expect further clearance at 1825. Every single detail gets written down in the cockpit so there's zero confusion. The last part, EFC time, or expected further clearance is basically the win of the hold. Think of it like being given a number at a deli counter. It tells the pilot when ATC expects to get them moving again. Once that time gets close, either clearance comes through or they've updated with a new EFC. This system keeps everyone in the loop. Pilots know what to expect, controllers keep traffic flowing, and the sky doesn't turn into a free-for-all. It's structured, it's calm, and yes, it's practiced thousands of times. If you think planes only circle because of bad weather, oh, you're in for a surprise. What comes next will change how you see every holding pattern from now on. Buckle up, this gets good. Now, sometimes planes circle not because the airport is busy, because the plane itself is. More specifically, it's too heavy to land. Every aircraft has a maximum landing weight, and sometimes extra fuel pushes it past that limit. Why carry that extra fuel in the first place? It's for safety. Back up for unexpected weather, headwinds that eat into flight time, or possible diversions to alternate airports. Pilots would rather have too much than too little. If that extra fuel doesn't get burned off during the flight, the crew might need to hold deliberately for a few minutes to lighten the plane. This isn't dangerous, in fact, it's standard procedure. Imagine a transatlantic flight that encountered tailwinds and arrived ahead of schedule. Instead of dumping fuel or risking a heavy landing, pilots request a brief hold to burn some off. Passengers barely notice, but it ensures the aircraft touches down safely and smoothly. And then there are unexpected twists. Even with perfect weather and a calm traffic flow, sudden operational issues can throw a wrench into the landing plan. Sometimes the runway gets temporarily blocked. Maybe a plane has a flat tire after landing or needs a tow. Other times, snow removal crews are plowing or de-icing the surface, making it unsafe to land for a few minutes. Emergencies can also pop up out of nowhere, like an aircraft returning with engine trouble or a medical situation on board. ATC responds fast. If they need to pause arrivals, incoming flights hold. A quick NOTAM, notice to air missions, might alert everyone to a temporary change. Even wake turbulence can cause short holds. If a giant 747 lands, the air behind it can be unstable for smaller jets. So ATC builds in a little extra spacing, like leaving room after a big wave before diving in. It's not chaos, it's coordination. When airplanes hold, it's not some random sky dance. Every single turn happens inside a carefully protected bubble of airspace. The bubble is split into two zones, the primary area and the secondary area. The primary area is like the safe core of a racetrack. Here, the FAA guarantees plenty of obstacle clearance, about a thousand feet between the lowest aircraft altitude and the highest terrain or obstacle below. This is where pilots are meant to fly the hold. 
however, but can vary slightly by category. Then comes the secondary area, which acts more like a soft buffer zone around the racetrack. The protection here tapers off, starting at 500 feet of clearance near the inner edge and gradually decreasing to zero at the outer edge. It's not where the pilots aim to be, but it's there in case winds push them slightly off course. Now, how do they decide how big this invisible racetrack is? That's where TERPS comes in, short for Terminal Instrument Procedures. Think of TERPS as the rule book that calculates the protected airspace depending on altitude, distance from the fix, and aircraft speed. And yes, speed matters a lot. The faster you go, the bigger the racetrack needs to be to keep everything safe. That's why the FAA sets maximum holding speeds so no one's flying outside the safety bubble. Every hold you see is backed by math, structure, and a whole lot of planning. All right, so how do pilots actually get into a hold? It's not like merging onto a highway and hoping for the best. There are three standard entry methods, direct, parallel, and teardrop. Direct entry is the simplest. You just turn straight into the holding pattern. Parallel entry has the pilot fly out on the inbound course, then make a turn to come back around. Teardrop entry involves angling into the hold with a slight offset, then swinging back in. Which entry pilots choose depends on the angle they're approaching the fix from. It's precise, but it's second nature to train crews. Once they're in the hold, timing becomes everything. Inbound legs are one minute long below 14,000 feet and one and a half minutes above that. Pilots constantly adjust for wind, so they stay on track. Remember those speed limits? The FAA caps holding speeds to keep everyone inside that protected area, roughly 200 knots below 6,000 feet, 230 knots between 6,001 and 14,000 feet, and 265 knots above that. Some holds have their own special speed limits, and pilots always follow them. Even when it looks like planes are just circling lazily in the sky, there's a sharp structured dance happening behind the scenes. Let's bring all this sky choreography to life with a few real stories. Every morning at London Heathrow, a traffic ballet unfolds in the sky. Long haul flights from places like New York, Dubai, and Hong Kong all arrive around the same time. But Heathrow can only land so many planes at once. So what happens? They stack up like floating parking lots. One layer at 7,000 feet, another at 8,000, and so on. Each plane patiently loops until ATC gives the magic words, clear to descend weather brings its own drama. Picture a major U.S. airport surrounded by fast-moving thunderstorms. Arrivals are forced into holding patterns, orbiting outside the storm zone. Once the cells drift away, planes are released in sequence. If the storm lingers too long, some aircraft are diverted to alternate airports. It's a tense but well-rehearsed routine. And here's a fun moment many passengers remember, looking out the window and spotting another aircraft above or below them in the stack. It can look close, but it's perfectly normal. ATC ensures thousands of feet of vertical separation. What feels like a sky jam to you is actually a carefully spaced cue. It's structured, it's precise, and it works like clockwork. A few myths. No, planes aren't lost when they circle in the sky. They're not wandering around. Every single hold is managed with tight rules, separation standards, and constant communication between pilots and ATC. If you're ever on a flight that enters a hold, you can actually spot it out the window, sometimes you'll see other aircraft at different altitudes, all calmly holding position. You'll probably hear the pilot mention an EFC time, expected further clearance over the PA. That's the estimate for when you'll come back on approach. Yes, holding can make the flight feel longer, but it's a normal and safe part of IFR flying. Behind those calm pilot voices is a finely tuned system that keeps everyone protected. So next time your flight loops lazily over a city, know this, it's not chaos, it's choreography. Turn every delay is part of a system built to keep you safe. Whether it's a thunderstorm, a runway jam, or a stack of arrivals, someone's guiding it all. If you learned something new today, keep your curiosity climbing. Subscribe to JetLogic and let's keep exploring the skies together.